So a big story has been circulating around the internet recently, and I'm looking at this, and I'm like, why? Like, is I, okay, I think everyone already knew this, especially people who are subscribed to RGT85, because we talked about this a couple months ago on the channel. But now, once again, this news itself, the story itself is starting to get thrown out there once again it's been corroborated by yet another outlet so it's gaining steam once again it has to do with a lot of things happening right now involving nintendo the whole e3 situation and the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom and like i said this shouldn't come as a huge surprise to people if you actually looked historically at what nintendo does with big zelda titles with waning systems in terms of years on the marketplace and the nintendo switch of course is turning six years old we all we already know that we already got the birthday celebrations planned we got the like, cakes and hats probably that we're going to be using to celebrate this return to form for nintendo but of course you always have to look at the other side of the coin what's coming out in the future what's the what's going to happen next for nintendo and the nintendo switch will it even be a nintendo switch that's another thing that i'm not quite sure we should assume that with this but the information we're talking about today is like i said something that we talked about you know pretty recently a couple i want to say like two months ago maybe it was december middle of december or something but that's the impact of the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom because once that game you know comes out it's kind of like what are they doing next with the switch like what what games what big triple a titles is nintendo going to work on and in that video i thought to myself you know because there was a vgc article out there that said don't expect anything really heavy hitter wise you know triple a titles in the second half of 2023 with the switch after zelda comes out and to me that made perfect sense when you look at the history of zelda titles usually it's the it's you know the, the swan song for the current system that's usually released on another platform as well when you look at something like twilight princess on the gamecube it also released day one on the wii when you look at of course skyward sword which came out towards the tail end of the Wii's life cycle one year after that nintendo really didn't release many titles big titles we should say for the system and then we got the wii u and then everything was ported over to the wii u all your classic zeldas with hd and then of course you had breath of the wild on the wii u which also came out on the nintendo switch so it's a pattern that's been somewhat consistent throughout the years you know for the past you know two decades that's just how nintendo seems to handle these things like zelda is the is sometimes the starting point but it's always definitely a swan song for a system and then they start to move on to the other thing well this information is now coming to us from ign i'm not an ign hater i like some people at ign like brian altano there's a lot of people i don't like at ign but this information is coming to us from them via my nintendo news and this was basically something that had gone down um with the esa and the whole e3 situation because of course e3 is now in shambles allegedly nintendo microsoft and sony are not showing up at this and doing events for e3 in building in person events which kind of negates the whole point of e3 because uh, i mean i guess there could be indie companies and you know third party stuff but here's the information here ign understands that nintendo and xbox were initially invested in having a presence at the event but both had to pull out for reasons unrelated to the show bgc has since reported nintendo opted to not take part in the event due to a light second half release schedule not justifying the event space information that ign couldn't corroborate so basically what they're saying is after the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom there's not going to be a whole lot of things going on as far as AAA titles now before we get into the statement itself we have to talk about the two titles that we know about that we can confirm exist that don't have a release date pikmin 4 which is supposed to come out this year and metroid prime 4 pikmin 4 i'm sure will be a great game i'm sure it'll be a great game is pikmin 4 a game that you're going to build your e3 presentation around is that is that going to get people excited you know it, it's more of a niche title it, it's a well done title it's not a title that i'm interested in but it's more of a niche title so i i don't feel like you know that's going to be something that gets like tons of people excited like i, I feel like you know it, it's a nice complimentary game um and i'm sure it'll sell decently for the pikmin titles as far as those games are concerned but this is these aren't like you know 5 10 15 million unit seller games the pikmin franchise so this is kind of a smaller title metroid prime 4 is the more interesting one though and i i think part of it is because i believe you could build something 
around Metroid Prime 4. I believe you could do a, a presentation, you know, uh, be on the show floor, have a bunch of cool Samus stuff on there. But that game's not coming out this year. Like, it, it's just not. I'm not even sure it's going to come out on the Switch sometimes, man. Like, this has been the biggest mystery game. You know, people talk about how companies take six, seven years to make games. And, oh, Nintendo games don't have that problem. It's like uh, Bayonetta 3, Metroid Prime 4. Like, every company is subject to, to having delays with games. I mean, look at the Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild 2 or Tears of the Kingdom has been six years. Like... You know, it's just such a weird thing for a lot of diehard Nintendo fans to say. I've seen people say, well, IGN doesn't know their games, the rest of the games for 2023 and 2024. And you're probably right on that. It's just what defines, you know, a heavy hitter title. I believe it's something that you would build a whole presentation around. And if you don't have anything to show that's sort of of that caliber, what's the point? What's the point? You know, why would you waste your money? Because the E3 is expensive, and you don't even really necessarily need E3 to get your games out there. You have PlayStation, um, you have the State of Play events, you have developer directs with Xbox, you have Nintendo directs with Nintendo. Like, it just seems like a, a dying medium, but the fact that none of the three big companies are going to be there is kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of throwing dirt on the corpse of this i think nintendo but to get back to the main point i still think nintendo is going to release games for the switch i just don't think they're going to be you know genre defining huge triple a high budget experiences because i feel like they're going to want to put those games on whatever the next platform is and is are we going to see cross generational games between the two platforms Maybe it depends on what the secondary platform is. Could Metroid Prime 4 end up skipping the Switch and just moving over to this new platform? I don't think that's outside of the realm of possibility. I really don't. It just depends on what this new platform is. And of course, when it comes out. But yeah, you know, th this shouldn't be a big surprise to people, though. When you look at the historical lineup of stuff, when you look at just uh, how things happen how things transpire within nintendo like this is just what they do zelda is their big swan song even when zelda wasn't the biggest selling franchise for nintendo which i mean really before breath of the wild zelda sold well but nothing like breath of the wild did that was still you know a, a nintendo's big thing that they always like to do at the end of the system's life cycle or to start a new system's life cycle so that's kind of why a lot of people thought oh there was going to be new hardware with tears of the kingdom but that's not the case i think you know within a year of tears of the kingdom you might see something but it's an interesting thing you know it's a it's it's definitely something because you you have to get into the whole schematics of it you know what defines a triple a game what makes one person happy might not make the other person happy but i think you really have to boil it down to just, just from a presentation standpoint you know could you get people to flock to your booth with something like pikmin 4 or metroid prime 4 i think metroid prime you could it's just i don't think that game's coming out anytime soon but let me know in the comment section down below what you think of all this do you think this is just hoopla and hoopinanny and nintendo's got some choice cuts up their sleeve bigger titles than we've seen thus far or do you think that this is the way that things are going to go with the switch as far as after tears of the kingdom you know it's just going to be smaller titles you know maybe some cult classics some fan favorites and as always guys thank you for checking out this video if you are new to the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button like comment and share hit that bell notification as well and as always i'll catch you guys on the next video later